Welcome to this multivariable Mendelian randomization tutorial. This tutorial introduces summary level multivariable MR and demonstrates how such analyses can be implemented using the MVMR R package. For online introductions to Mendelian randomization or to skip to specific sections of this tutorial, please click on the links in the video description below. Multivariable MR describes a range of approaches which allow for the effects of multiple exposures to be estimated simultaneously. This is particularly valuable in cases where exposures are highly correlated and potentially share a number of relevant genetic variants identified through GWAS. To demonstrate, here is a graph in which we have two exposures, X1 and X2, an outcome Y, and three sets of genetic variants obtained from GWAS. When we consider a single exposure in the univariate MR setting, we rely upon genetic variants being associated with the outcome solely through the exposure of interest. Pathways from the genetic variants to the outcome outside of the exposure of interest are defined as horizontal pleiotropic effects and can lead to bias in causal effect estimates. Looking at the graph, we could potentially perform two two-sample summary MR analyses estimating the effects of each exposure upon the outcome Y. However, in doing so, we would rely on the genetic variants used either being independent of the alternate exposure or the alternate exposure being independent of the outcome. In other words, if we were to perform a summary MR analysis estimating the effects of X1 on Y, we would rely upon genetic variants either being independent of X2 or X2 being independent of Y. This is most likely the case where exposures are highly correlated. For example, suppose we wanted to estimate the effect of smoking on blood pressure. If one or more of the genetic variants we identify through a GWAS of smoking are related to addictive behavior in general, it is plausible that they could also be associated with phenotypes such as alcohol consumption. This would likely invite bias due to horizontal pleiotropy. Yet omitting variants from the analysis can substantially limit our power to detect causal associations, especially where very few genetic variants have been identified. Multivariable MR allows us to use the entire set of relevant genetic information to simultaneously estimate the effect of multiple exposures upon an outcome. So with reference to the graph, we can use G1, G2, and G3 to simultaneously estimate the effects of X1 on Y and the effects of X2 on Y. In this case, the effect of X1 on Y is interpreted as a direct effect of X1 on Y adjusting for X2, and the effect of X2 on Y is interpreted as a direct effect of X2 adjusting for X1. Crucially, this can be extended to an arbitrary number of exposures. Estimating these direct causal associations relies upon a set of assumptions analogous to our conventional MR assumptions. First, the set of genetic variants we use must be robustly associated with each exposure we include in our model. Importantly, it is the strength of association conditional on the remaining exposures in the model that is important. Conditional instrument strength is quantified using a modified form of Cochrane's Q statistic, here labeled QX where a higher degree of heterogeneity is an indicator of greater instrument strength. This heterogeneity statistic can be converted into an F statistic and compared to the conventional thresholds for instrument strength used in MR. Typically, an F statistic greater than 10 is an indicator of sufficient instrument strength for analyses. In order to accurately estimate the QX statistic, we require a covariance matrix of the estimated effects of each genetic variant on each of the exposures. This can be acquired by either estimating the values using individual level data, approximating the values using phenotypic covariances, or assuming this covariance matrix to be zero. This would be the case where all gene exposure effects were estimated using separate non-overlapping samples. The second multivariable MR assumption requires the set of genetic instruments to be independent of confounders with respect to any exposures and the outcome. This is a direct extension of the second MR assumption and requires genetic variants to only be associated with their exposure of interest. Finally, genetic variants are required to not be directly associated with the outcome of interest. This is a direct extension of the third MR assumption, 
where direct associations between a gene and an outcome are defined as horizontal pleiotropic effects. As in the univariate MR case, heterogeneity in effect estimates is indicative of horizontal pleiotropy. But in the multivariable MR setting, this pleiotropy is quantified by the QA statistic, which is a further modification of Cochrane's Q. So in contrast to the QX statistic, we would here want the QA statistic to be small, indicating a lack of substantial pleiotropic effects. Once again, we will require covariance matrices of the estimated effects of each genetic variant on each of the exposures to arrive at accurate estimates of QA. Now that we have briefly explored each of the multivariable MR assumptions, we can consider the underlying regression model that we will use to estimate our direct causal associations. This model represents a generalization of the IVW model we use in univariate summary MR analyses. In this case, big gamma hat j represents the gene outcome association for the jth genetic variant. Gamma hat 1j represents the gene exposure association for the jth variant with respect to exposure 1. We can then extend the MVMR model to include an arbitrary number of exposures. Note that we also omit an intercept, as is the case for the univariate IVW model. The regression coefficients are then interpreted as the direct effect for each corresponding exposure. So now that we've briefly outlined the summary multivariable MR approach, let's take a look at some software that can help us implement these methods. For this tutorial, we'll be using the MVMR R package, as well as R version 3.6 and R Studio version 1.2. Links to these resources are provided in the video description below. So let's get started using the MVMR R package. To begin, we'll want to make sure that we're running R version 3.6, and we're running this within R Studio version 1.2. Once we've done this, we can go to Google and type in WSpiller GitHub. From here, we can click on the link MR Practicals, which will take us to the GitHub repository where the tutorial materials are being hosted. Now, if we scroll down to installation, we can see all the blocks of code that we'll need to copy into our R console to install the necessary packages for this tutorial. Let's return once all these packages have been installed. So now that we've installed all the necessary packages, we can load the library MR Practicals and then type the command vignette in quotations MVMR space tutorial to bring up an embedded R markdown document with each of the steps that we'll be following to perform our multivariable MR analyses. So let's take a look at the workflow for conducting our summary level MVMR analysis. First, we need to obtain our raw summary data, after which we'll format that data for our downstream analyses. Next, we'll assess instrument strength by calculating the QX and corresponding F statistics with respect to each exposure. Following that, we'll assess horizontal pleiotropy by calculating the QA heterogeneity statistic. And then finally, we'll estimate our direct causal effects using our MVMR model. Each function contained within the MVMR R package, along with the step to which it corresponds, is highlighted in the flowchart below. To begin, we obtain our summary data, after which we check to see if the covariance matrices required for our heterogeneity statistics are known. If they are not known, but we have individual level data that was used in the GWAS, we can use the snipcov underscore MVMR function to estimate these covariance matrices. If this individual level data is not known, we can estimate what those covariance matrices would be using the correlation between phenotypes if known. This is achieved using the phenocov underscore MVMR function. If this information is not available, then we can check to see whether the gene exposure associations have been estimated in separate samples. If this is the case, then we can set these covariance matrices as equal to zero. However, if this is not the case, then we'll require further information in order to correctly estimate our heterogeneity statistics. Once a decision has been made with respect to the required covariance matrices, we can format the data using format underscore MVMR, test instrument strength using the strength underscore MVMR function, 
and then test for horizontal pleiotropy using the pleiotropy underscore MVMR function. Finally, we can estimate our direct effects. In a case where there doesn't seem to be substantial pleiotropy, we can use the IVW underscore MVMR function. And where there is substantial heterogeneity, we can use the QHET underscore MVMR function, which performs a Q-minimization approach to estimating causal associations. Let's go through an example analysis using the MVMRR package. To begin, we'll need to obtain summary data, and this should include the gene exposure associations for each genetic variant selected as an instrument for any exposure, the corresponding standard errors for these gene exposure associations, the gene outcome associations for each genetic variant, and then the corresponding standard errors for the gene outcome associations. In this example, we are using lipid fractions as our exposures of interest, specifically LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, and triglycerides. In the example data frame, underscore beta represents association estimates, and underscore SE represents the corresponding standard errors. We've also included a column SNP, which gives the RSID number for each genetic variant. And while this isn't strictly necessary for conducting our MVMR analysis, it can prove useful for downstream follow-up of specific variants. Using the function head, we can see the first six rows of the raw dat underscore MVMR data frame. And note here that each genetic variant has an association estimate for each exposure, LDL, HDL, and triglycerides. That means that as long as the genetic variant has been identified as being associated with one exposure, the corresponding association estimates for each exposure will be included, even if this variant was not identified in the remaining exposure GWAS. So now that we have obtained our raw data, we now need to define the covariance matrices needed to calculate our heterogeneity statistics. If this information is not explicitly known, we can estimate the covariance terms using individual data. This uses the SNP cov underscore MVMR function, and we can see the details for this function by typing in question mark SNP cov underscore MVMR. The SNP cov underscore MVMR function uses individual level genetic and exposure data to generate covariance matrices for estimated effects of individual genetic variants on each exposure. It takes as an input a matrix or data frame containing genetic instrument measures. This could, for example, be dosage data. And it also takes in a matrix or data frame containing the exposure measures X. It then outputs a list of covariance matrices with respect to each genetic variant retaining the ordering specified in the G's matrix. If individual data used in the GWAS is not available, we can estimate the phenotypic correlation between exposures from individual level data. This can be achieved by using the phenocov underscore MVMR function. And we can see the details of this function by typing in question mark phenocov underscore MVMR. Here, we use an external phenotypic covariance matrix and summary data to estimate covariance matrices for the estimated effects of individual genetic variants on each exposure. Here we're taking as inputs a phenotypic matrix using exposures, constructed using individual level exposure data, and then SEBXGs, which is a matrix containing standard errors corresponding to the gene exposure association for each genetic variant. This will output a list of covariance matrices with respect to each genetic variant, retaining the ordering in SEBXGs. And our final option, if the gene exposure associations have been estimated using separate non-overlapping samples, is to fix the covariance matrices to be zero by design. Once this information has been estimated, we can format our summary data by using the format underscore MVMR function. This checks and organizes the summary data and puts it into a format for use in downstream MVMR analyses. And it takes the following pieces of information. It takes a data frame containing the gene exposure associations for each genetic variant, a vector of gene outcome associations, a data frame of standard errors for the gene exposure associations, a vector of gene outcome standard errors, 
And then finally, the genetic variant ID numbers, if these are known. Using the raw data stored in the MVMR package, we can see how this can be achieved. So we can define an object f.data, and this will contain our gene exposure estimates, which are the columns 1, 2, and 3, our gene outcome association estimates, which is column 7, our standard errors for our gene exposure associations as columns 4, 5, and 6, our standard errors for our gene outcome associations as column 8, and then our genetic variant ID numbers as column 9. We can then use the head function with f.data, and that's going to show us each column where we can see the correct information is under the correct heading. Note that this function will define each exposure using x1, x2, x3, and so on, and that the ordering of these exposures and the allocation of a number depends on the order in which the gene exposure associations have been put into the format MVMR function. So now that we've correctly formatted our data, it's time to evaluate the strength of our instruments. This can be performed by using the strength underscore MVMR function, which takes two arguments. The first argument is the formatted data frame that we created using format underscore MVMR. And the second argument is the list of covariance matrices that we need to calculate our heterogeneity statistics. These can be obtained from the snipcov underscore MVMR function, the phenocov underscore MVMR function, or they can be set to zero when appropriate. Note that this function will give a warning if no covariance covariance matrices is provided. So now we can define a new object using the strength underscore MVMR function. We specify as our input our formatted data, and in this case, we're setting the covariance matrices to be zero. And this will give us the F statistic for each of our exposures included in our analysis. If we use the conventional F statistic threshold of 10 as our minimal value for instrument strength, we can see that each exposure is sufficiently strong to afford a meaningful estimate. So now let's test for horizontal pleiotropic effects by calculating a Q statistic for heterogeneity, QA. This is achieved by using the pleiotropy underscore MVMR function, which takes the same inputs as the strength underscore MVMR function. So here we can specify our formatted data frame, and we can also set our covariance matrices to be equal to zero. And if we run this function, we see that we get a Q statistic of 683 and a P value that is very small. In this case, it seems likely that we may have some horizontal pleiotropic effects and that some genetic variants may be violating one or more of the MVMR assumptions. Finally, we can go ahead and estimate our direct causal effects by using the IVW underscore MVMR function. This takes a single input, which is the formatted data frame created using format underscore MVMR. If we run this function, we can see a direct effect estimate for each of our specified exposures along with corresponding standard errors and p-values. In this example, we have illustrated how MVMR can be conducted using three arbitrary exposures, LDL, HDL, and triglycerides, with respect to an outcome systolic blood pressure. We should, however, be careful in how we interpret the sensitivity analyses we have conducted. In each case, we have specified that the covariance matrices are equal to zero, but this is very unlikely to be the case given the data we are using. While setting these values to zero has been useful for illustration, suitable care should be taken to ensure that these covariance matrices are appropriately estimated. This concludes our multivariable MR tutorial. The materials and software presented in this tutorial have been developed by the University of Bristol MRC Integrative Epidemiology Unit and have been funded by the Wellcome Trust. For more information on ongoing projects and opportunities within the IEU, please click on the links in the video description below.